As we head towards having completed three months of lockdown, one thing is for certain. We just really miss hockey. Playing it, watching it, reading about it. It's been really difficult to know what to do with ourselves over the last 12 weeks. Creativity has been key in keeping ourselves occupied, and no better has that been demonstrated by two of the GB athletes. And that is what today's podcast is all about, as we welcome on Ian Sloan and Rhys Smith, to discuss how they've been helping to inspire the next generation of hockey stars and keep their skills sharp while stuck at home. So first of all, on today's podcast, we are delighted to welcome on Ian, who, having won more than 100 international caps for England and Great Britain, and captain both of them and competed at an Olympic Games, has teamed up with fellow senior international Ed Haller to create their own coaching company over the last few weeks. Welcome to Inside the Circle, the podcast, Ian, and great to have you on. Uh, firstly, how have you personally found found lockdown? Has it been quite challenging for you? Yeah, it has been. Um, I think I think just ups and downs, really. With every, I think it's been the same for everyone. But um, I think that initial few weeks was kind of still not sure whether the Olympics was going to go ahead. And then obviously we got the news that it was postponed. And um, yeah, really since then, it's kind of just been about sort of trying to cope with that and trying to sort of keep um doing stuff that I enjoy and yeah that's that's really why I've sort of started to do some um online coaching and trying to you know keep myself relatively busy and have projects that, that keep me motivated um so yeah it's really it's been quite up and down but um luckily I've had really good support from my family and friends and um, throughout it and yeah it's been it's been okay I'm looking forward to getting back in the pitch there so how did the idea of Five Yards, your your company, come about? Was it something that you thought of because of lockdown or was it something that you already had in the pipeline that you were then able to, to launch and, and make lockdown that bit more interesting for those of us who, who want to play hockey but are a bit stuck to know what to do? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of a combination, to be honest. I'm, I'm really, really into my coaching. Um, I've, uh, I'm, I'm well known amongst the team as probably the biggest hockey badger. Um, and I just lo- I just love playing. I love coaching, um, and yeah, coaching has been something that I I definitely want to go into after I finish playing. Um, and so really, from that perspective, starting my own co- coaching company um, and and doing things like this was was kind of always in the pipeline, but probably slightly further down the line. Um, and then when lockdown happened, um, it was actually my first club, uh, Cookstown Hockey Club in Northern Ireland they've kind of got the ball rolling with this because they asked me to do an, an online session uh, for one of their junior teams. Um, and initially I kind of thought, you know, how can I do this in such a way where it is, it's engaging, it's fun, it's, you know, it's essentially it, what, what it is, it's, it's skills anywhere that you can, you can do anywhere in your home, in your garden. And it's quite a good challenge for me as a coach to be able to come up with, with sessions that, you know, ha- have that same level of, competitiveness fun you know they feel like they're still part of a, a, a small community even though they're doing it um by themselves in a sense so that's kind of how it started and then from there i did some sessions with wickham hawk club uh, which is the club that i coach um which i've been coaching at and yeah that that luckily that went really well and loads of parents and and juniors um you know were emailing me messaging me just basically saying how, how, how much they'd enjoyed it, how happy they were to have hockey kind of back in their lives a little bit. And um, I suppose that inspired me to kind of keep going with it and try to branch out uh, and try to hit as many people over the UK as possible because, you know, I really do believe that something that we probably could do better as a national team or, or national team players is giving that exposure to young players throughout the UK. You know, we're, we're all based around Bisham and around the, the I suppose the South East and people that play at those clubs, juniors at those clubs do get exposure to to us and to the international players, but maybe not too much in the north or over across the water in Northern Ireland. So um yeah, I, I was chatting to to my, you know, Ed Ed Horlers obviously um started it with me. He's my best probably one of my best friends um at Wimbledon. 
and he's been doing loads of junior coaching there. Uh, so yeah, it, it just worked perfectly. And we initially just said, right, let's just do a half term camp. Let's just branch out, open it up to any anyone in the UK can join. Um, yeah, let's just really see how it goes, I suppose. And sort of similar to how Wickham went, we just, yeah, we got so much positive feedback from it. And I think because all of our junior players in this country have been essentially in, in, in their house for the last two, three months, not able to play hockey, not able to kind of feel like they're maybe getting better or feel like um, they're able to keep in touch. You know, we've had some some clubs that have like had numerous players from their club join in and they feel like they're doing it with their friends. Um, and yeah, just the, the, the amount of positive feedback we got, we kind of just thought, yeah, let's just give this a go. and. We started Five Yards, um, our own coaching company, um, and yeah, just this week, a couple of days uh, uh, on the tenth of June, we had Hannah Martin on as our first special guest, our first session with Five Yards, um, and it was really cool. It was really, it was really nice to see um, all of the kids' faces light up when she came on and answered their questions and showed us her field skill. What's the the sort of reaction been like and, and how popular have the sessions been did you ex- and did you expect them to be as popular and as well received as they have been it's a really good question like both i think both ed and i were in a bit of a position of like you know are people interested in this sort of thing you know what what, what is the appetite i suppose for um sessions like this it's it's something that's you know pretty much completely new um throughout lockdown i suppose we had been seeing lots of different videos on Twitter, seeing lots of different, like myself and Ed did ambassador sessions for Wimbledon, but they were all kind of just essentially videos of us doing skills that then players at home could copy. Um, whereas we wanted to do something quite different. We wanted to essentially create, set, create and design sessions that felt um, a lot more interactive, felt a lot more sort of competitive amongst the people that are on there. And an ability to, you know, with all of our sessions, the um, it's completely optional to have your camera on or off. It's completely option to, you know, send in a chat or not send in your score or whatever. You know, the kids can really decide for themselves. But if they do have their camera on and it is facing them and we can see them doing the skills, we're then very easily able to give feed, multiple bits of feedback, you know, throughout if we give them a skill to do for 45 seconds, we have everyone on the screen and we can see everyone, do, uh, we can see, you know, 90% of them have their, have their camera on and they're really keen to kind of us to watch them do the skill and give them feedback. Um, so I, I suppose we, yeah, we were quite confident in the sense that we felt like what we were able to offer was different and more, and, and I suppose we backed it to be more to be better in a sense just you know more more worthwhile for for the kids and um but at the same time we we still had absolutely no idea so it was a bit of a risk um but we you know luckily both Ed and I are quite optimistic people and we kind of thought let's just have a go and yes yeah, luckily the the reception we've had has 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 way surpassed our expectations um both the kids that have been in contact and their parents have, have just been have been so positive and we really appreciate that because um you know we really want it to be fun for them you made a point um earlier on when you were answering that the first question about how you know you feel like as as international players it's you could do more in, in terms of in, inspiring the future i guess is that do you feel like that's sort of not been the case in the past because sort of time has been limited but actually lockdown has provided you with a solution to that that actually you know when hopefully we can return to some sort of normality that actually you can continue doing these sort of online coaching sessions in the future and actually this will make hockey more accessible make yourselves even more accessible than ever before yeah i think you're totally right um i think it's always been something that you know speaking to other different gb players it's something that is at the forefront of our minds and um i suppose until now there there didn't really seem to be much of a solution in a sense. If, you know, we, we really wanted to inspire and get in touch and give contact to as many people throughout the UK as possible. Um, you know, inspiring our junior players. 
And I suppose until now, we were very limited by location, time, energy. Sometimes, you know, you, if you've got a day off, it's, do I want to drive five hours north to do a set, to do a junior session? And um, luckily, we have a lot of people in the squad who, who do give up a lot of their time and energy um, for, for those types of things. But really, this is, I feel this is the best way of, of, of doing it, to be honest. I think this is the best way of reaching as many people and giving opportunities to as many people and wherever they live in the UK and um, kind of fair, fairly regularly. And we kind of need to figure out, you know, how many, how many camps we're going to do, or are we going to do weekly sessions? We still need to, to figure all of these things out, but we certainly believe this is the best way of, of achieving that goal of giving opportunities to juniors um, throughout the UK. And what, what sort of the, the main focus in terms of what you're actually coaching? Because we've seen, and it's become very popular on, on Instagram, especially at the moment, uh, videos of people performing the most ridiculous skills. And it seems as though that we've got a lot of incredibly talented people in this country. And, and is, but are you, are you more focusing on, on, on that? Or is it more just getting the basics right? Or is it a bit of both and varies week by week? Yeah, it's a, it's a really good question. So, um, yeah, it's been actually so, it's been so good actually seeing so many people um, posting their videos on, on social media and some of the skills that the young, young players have now is, is absolutely ridiculous. It's so, so cool to see. Um, we kind of had a few really key things that we wanted to get from the sessions. Um, so we, we, wanted, we wanted it to feel um, different. We wanted it to feel special. So which, whatever, whichever bit of the session we were doing, we didn't want it to feel like their sort of standard school. Like, let's just take the warm up for example. A really, really easy thing to to um to use as an example. Like, they go down to their their hockey pitch. They run around the pitch once. They do a couple of hamstring stretches and kind of off they go. Whereas, Ed has done a brilliant job of um, introducing different yoga movements, different uh, a little bit of strength and conditioning exercises. Obviously, all relatively basic stuff, but and stuff that they're able to do, but. I suppose just giving them exposure to, to things that they probably hadn't seen before or done before. Um, and then when it comes to the hockey part of the session, um, we, we thought about it quite, quite, quite a lot and we, we had some really key goals as to what we wanted the session to be like. So we really wanted them to be interactive. We really wanted to be able to give them feedback during it. We really wanted to make it fun and competitive. Um, and we really wanted, a, as you kind of mentioned, the balance of different skill levels. So we've got some five-year-olds on there in their garden getting chased around by the dog. And we've got some 16-year-old kids who are absolute world, world-class skills already. Um, and so it's basically being able to cater for all of those. And what we actually took inspiration from, um, interestingly enough, was uh, video gaming, uh, sort of the, the skills tutorial parts of, of, of video games and um, so it's been it's actually been quite a big trend in coaching recently whereby coaches are trying to design their sessions more along the lines of kind of what a video game would feel like and and, and obviously like I love it I love playing um sports games on on the playstation and tons of kids are super engaged by by these games and so actually can we take elements from that into our coaching? And that's, that's an, a real, really good concept that I find really interesting. And so what we've done, if you just take my, I run a little 10 minute section um, as, part of, as, as part of the session. And we've taken the sort of FIFA, uh, bronze level, silver level, gold level um, award in a sense uh, for, for a particular skill. So this week it was, it was our ability to kind of fake a pass and and then sort of move out of that space with either and, and the bronze level for example would be we fake a pass and getting all of the kids to look at the screen so i know that they're looking up looking for the pass and then dragging it back into their body space and protecting it and that's so that's bronze level you know they can all do it they can all have a go at it um silver level would be they fake the pass and actually instead of just dragging it along the floor back they're actually you know over the ball lifting it back towards them and then goal level is just as crazy as we can get really it's kind of just you know fake pass lifted back towards you while the ball's in the air we're knocking it a different direction 
um, and and it, it, what, what's been really interesting has been um, how much all of the kids have just enjoyed trying the different levels. So, you know, you might have a seven-year-old, they're definitely able to do bronze, so that's good. Silver, they're finding like, oh, this is, I've never really tried this before, but it's quite good fun to try. And then they get to goal and it's like, oh goodness, like this is quite hard, but they, they, they've all just loved it. And once they've then done the bronze, silver, goal, they maybe do 45 seconds of each one with us giving some pointers, some feedback, I then say, right, um, it's competition time. You've got one minute, you choose which level you want to compete at. And then you want, you're going to see how many reps you can do in a minute. And so then at the end of the minute, they, they go on the chat section, they put their score through. Um, I pass over to Ed for his bit. And whilst Ed's doing his bit, I'm looking through all of the scores so that when it comes back to me, I'm then saying, right, the bronze winner this week was, uh, you know, the, the seven-year-old getting chased by their dog. The silver medalist was the 12-year-old who's been playing hockey for a few years and is getting pretty good. And the gold medal winner is the 16-year-old who is probably as far away from being, a, being in the GB team. So, um, yeah, it's been, it's been really good fun, actually, and really good for my coaching, trying to um, brainstorm and come up with, with different sessions. Uh, and something you mentioned there, how does it, how does it make you feel? You know, you're not, you're not getting the, the feedback sort of face to face because it's, this is all being done virtually. But you're able to get that, that feedback still in the form of them being able to see things or them enjoying it. And and how does that sort of make you feel that you know these these kids are really, you know, warming to it and really wanting to take part in your sessions? Yeah, it 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 genuinely has me. It's probably been the the best. Like the, the, doing the sessions has probably been the best thing about lockdown for me. Um, I have personally like really missed playing hockey, really missed coaching, missed being around the squad. Um, and these sessions actually have like, you know, really cheered me up in a sense and actually motivated me individually um, to continue with my training and my, all, all of my gym stuff, all of my running, because it kind of has just reignited and, and just made me remember my passion for the game as well. And, yeah, as you say, it, I think one of the first things that Ed and I found quite difficult about doing these sessions was it, you don't necessarily get that feedback as much from sort of from them to you during the sessions because it, you're you're not in person, you don't see the body language, you don't necessarily see the smile, or you don't. Um, it's it's then hard to gauge, you know, are they actually finding this fun? And it's like, right, you know. We don't know, essentially. Um, but I suppose what we've really measured it on has been, so take day one of camp, we've got this many people. And on day four, nobody has, we, we, haven't, we haven't lost anyone throughout the four days. No one has thought, this is rubbish. This is a waste of time. I'm not going to log on for day four. And then we measured it by how many people that were on the half-term camp signed up for the, five yards weekly sessions and we had a really high sort of uh, I suppose you could call it retention rate of people who really enjoyed the camp and as soon as we put the sessions on the website they were straight on there um, and 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 trying to get involved in these sessions as well so initially it was quite scary it was quite nerve-wracking thinking oh this could be rubbish and then luckily we got loads of feedback and we got loads of kids really really looking forward to the next sessions and and telling us how much they enjoyed it. Um, so that, yeah, so in a sense, it's quite retrospective um, feedback, but it's been really cool for us to get that. And do you think that in some ways that lockdown could actually almost strengthen the position of, of hockey in this country and actually, you know, we could actually be getting more people to want to play because of people like yourself and Reese and other athletes who are doing these sort of interactive online sessions? It's a good question, I think. I think one of my motivating factors for, for doing it in the first place, obviously we've talked about hitting, you know, exposure throughout the UK and we've talked about um, re-engaging all of our juniors, but there, it, it, what lockdown did was it, it did create a bit of a void in a sense, you know, there, whereas we usually would have had the pro league, we'd have had the build up to the Olympics and hockey actually would have been really in the limelight all of a sudden. Um, it, it sort of goes from that to being to being very little and if you are a sort of uh let's say you're a 12 year old junior at Wickham Hockey Club um 
you, you re realistically you could go probably the whole three months without seeing a hockey. You wouldn't you wouldn't see much hockey on TV. You wouldn't see much hockey in the news. You wouldn't see. Um, you could really just you know in in a sense you put, maybe could actually lose players from it because maybe they are just um, maybe it's easier to go out on. To, you know, with with the lockdown res uh, restrictions being relaxed, and maybe they're going out onto the grass and playing football instead of being able to get onto the hockey pitch. So, in a sense, it was more trying to keep the pe keep the juniors that we already have engaged. But I think it's a really good point, and I maybe I'm just not in the right circles, but I haven't seen m many much of this necessarily being done by other international athletes in different sports. Maybe maybe they or I just haven't seen, but. Yeah, I mean, if, if we are able to get some more players to come, come along to hockey through Reese's project and mine, um, I'd, I'd be really happy about that. And for you as a coach, you said how much you know you enjoy coaching and that's something that you want to, to, to do uh, as, as the years go on. What, what do you want to achieve as a coach? Is it getting people to have the same passion as you do? Is it helping people to have opportunities? Is it creating the next generation of superstars of what what do you want to achieve as a coach yeah it's really it's a it's a really good question um to be totally honest my in terms of just like my my personal career as a coach i really do want to, to be an international hockey coach i really would love to coach G, uh, great britain and england in the future um and yeah i suppose my where my passion lies um it's probably a combination of all of the things you mentioned there. Like I, I, I've been I've been coaching at Wickham for the last six seasons now, um, and I've recently been been um, been offered the role of a sort of player assistant at Wimbledon, which has been really cool. Um, so I'm going to be starting to do that next season, um, where I'll be doing some some of the video work and, and leading in certain areas of our game. So, but I think. Throughout all the, all the coaching I've done, I, I have loved working with the younger players. Um, at Wickham, I'm really lucky to have, to have a pretty good junior system. We've had uh, Liam Sanford and Liam Mantle come through there, obviously into the GB team. Um, and that's been one of my favourite parts of coaching, has been seeing a young player develop a passion for the game, develop a, um, a really good attitude to learning and, and see, how, see how much they've progressed. And whether that's been at Wickham or they've actually gone to university and they're playing in the National League or they're playing in the, in the Premier League, whatever, wherever that is. Um, that's, that's obviously made, made me feel quite proud um, to have had a little bit of an impact in that. So, yeah, it's really about just my love for the game, my passion for it. Um, I am a bit of a hockey nerd, so I do love the, I love the tactile part of it. I love the, the thinking about how to improve people's technique and making this, this training sessions really fun and, and competitive and yeah everyone really <laughs> enjoying hockey kind of as much as I do but I'm not sure that that might not be an achievable goal. And how much are you encouraged to alongside you know your training and your playing as a professional athlete how much are you encouraged to work on something like your coaching and and almost preparing for that for that eventual life after hockey? Yeah, I think one of the one of the best things about the Great Britain program as a whole is the fact that we have uh, Emma Mitchell, who is our um, life. Uh, what's her What's her official performance lifestyle manager? I guess. Yeah, I think it's that. So, so, well, essentially, her job is to is to help the athletes have something outside of just playing hockey. Because I mean, as everyone knows, uh, we're not on a footballer's wage. We need to have something to do after we retire. Um, and it's actually really good for us mentally and our well-being to have something alongside our playing. So let's say this time next year, I get injured. I can't go to the Olympics. You know, it, it's then a very dark time for me. But if I have another side project or if I have something else happening in my life, that then really that then really balances it out. So in within the squad, we've got um, a few guys who who do some stuff outside of hockey that's completely different. And we have quite we have a few guys doing some um, sort of online university courses. We've got other guys coaching, and everyone you know it's it's actually part of our individual development plan as a player to have a to have an, to have a more to me um, aspect in there and have have something that we're doing outside of the game. And I think that's quite unusual in, in elite sport. I think 
the traditional method would be to say you have to be 100 focused on your playing um and don't let anything else distract that um and i think that's sustainable in the short term but over the course of a four-year cycle or a 12-year career um that can become that can become very draining and um, i think it really helps to have something outside of your plan and final question before i let you go what are the what are the future plans for five yards what have you what have you got coming up over the next few weeks yeah great question so um yeah, Ed and I have been brainstorming pretty hard. We've, we've, we're really open, actually, to lots of different ideas. Um, in the short term, we've still got two more weeks of our, of our five yards online masterclass. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'd really encourage anyone who, who didn't get, get onto the first session. Um, those two sessions are still, still on our website, um, which you can, you can book. Um, after that, we, we're really going to um, have, have a really good brainstorm and think, how can we essentially retaining the goal? How can we impact as many people in the UK as possible? And we really believe that online camps probably will be our, our, our cornerstone, really are the main thing we do. But we've also had, had quite a few emails saying, you know, will you come to our club on this day? Will you, you know, and, and we're really open to that. So I think at some point down the line, it could be a, could be a, a physical camp in person on a hockey pitch. Um, it could be, uh, whereby we go to different clubs, different schools and do clinics. It could be that we, you know, one of the things I'm really passionate about and really enjoy is is sort of, is talking to other coaches um, and almost, you know, I, I'm, I'm very lucky to have been on the advanced coach program and, um, so, and, and I, I actually finished that this summer. And one of the best things about that has been having a community of coaches around me that I can chat through session plans, talk through video clips. And that almost giving access to that sort of environment to other coaches in schools and clubs um, is something that I'm really keen to start as well. So, yeah, we've got loads of ideas. Um, we just need to figure out uh, when we do certain things and who's interested in them. Is anyone interested? But one of the key things is really for people to try and is actually we really want people to get in touch with us. Um, you can find us through my Instagram or on Five Yards Instagram or on Twitter. Um, on our website five hyphen yards dot co dot uk um, and all of the information is on there in terms of how to get in touch and the different things that we're planning um, but yeah i'm really excited um, to, to kind of get started with a few different things see what works what doesn't work um, and hopefully people will get stuff from it you've done the plug i mean i was going to give you a plug there but you've already done it for yourself but uh thanks for joining us in and we wish you and ed all the very best with the projects and yes please make sure you you check it out if you want to learn from the best uh we'll be back after this very short break speaking to reese subscribe now on all of your usual podcast providers Welcome back to Inside the Circle, the podcast. And having spoken to Ian Sloan before the break, we are now delighted to be joined by Rhys Smith, the England and Great Britain international who also founded and runs Hockey in a City. First of all, welcome to the show, Rhys. Uh, we've been in lockdown for quite a while now. How have, you, how have you found it or how have you been coping? Thank you for having me on the podcast, Will. Uh, yeah, overall, I've really been enjoying lockdown. It's given me a lot of time to do things that I've wanted to do and things that I've needed to do. Um, yeah, like been very fortunate to not been too affected financially in, in the whole process and have just been using the time productively uh, for the most part. So yeah, really enjoyed it. A lot of people who follow you on your social media channels will see that you have been very busy, especially with, with hockey in a city. Um, you started that business probably oh, nearly a year ago now. And yeah, we, we released the first video, I think end of August, but I think we were talking about doing it from last year, February, March time. So yeah, it's been going for, the idea has been running for like over a year now. So I guess if you could, uh, start by explaining sort of how, how you came up with the idea of it and what, what the sort of driving process was behind it and, and how Hockey in a City came to be. 
Um, so there was no like one moment where Hockey in the City formed. Uh, but the main like inspiration for it was my experience at university and just seeing a lack of people from my background, like inner city areas. And that kind of frustrated me because it wasn't due to lack of ability. It was all down to lack of opportunity. And that represented hockey. Like all of those thoughts coming into the one form hockey in a city. So I guess what what did you what particularly then want to achieve? Was it just giving kids that may may not have those opportunities just the chance to pick up a stick, or was it sort of wanting to find like a, a hidden talent, or sort of what was the the main thing for you? I think the main thing was just making hockey more accessible, giving people the chance to experience it, to play it, to find a love, to, you know, just experience a sport that I've loved playing ever since I started it. Because a lot of my friends that went to it, they're from inner city areas. We all love playing hockey. We play it on the street and it's, it's something I wanted everyone to be able to do. And I think that was the main thing as well as raising awareness of the sport. So the, the children that you, um, you coach and stuff when you first went to them and, and started teaching them hockey had any of them played before or was it a new experience for, for all of them and actually if you sort of explain who the, the children are that you, you are coaching at the moment uh, okay so I'll start with the children we're coaching at the moment I've gone to my old primary school Emmanuel St Andrews Primary School in Stretton Common and we've got an after school club running there with two groups like a a key stage two group and an elite group. It's all from year three to year six. And we also do coaching with uh, Spencer Lynx, uh, who run like a community project on Sunday. So whenever I can drop down, if I haven't got a game, I will go down and coach and try and help out with the children there. And yeah, so the children, had they played hockey before? Well, in my assembly, they all put their hand up and said they had. <laughs> but when we went to the training, it was very evident that they hadn't because they didn't know how to hold a stick. Um, they were using both sides of the stick. So, yeah, I think they got the wrong um, idea of what I was talking about. So, yeah, none of them had played before. We had um, one ice hockey player, actually, um, who plays up at Streatham Ice Rink. But other than that, none of them had played before. So what's it been like for you then to see to see them not only in enjoying the sport that you love, but getting better and, and wanting to get better? No, it's, it's, it's great. Um, like, I feel when I first started it, I was under the impression that I wanted to try and make everyone as, um, as good as they can be, try and get them, you know, representing the county, regional, and that was kind of like my, my ambition. But what's been really great is understanding that some people just love playing hockey because it gives them opportunity to be outside playing sport with their friends. Uh, and then we do have some people who are very much kind of like on that kind of elite pathway kind of academy sort of sessions. So yeah, I've, I've loved kind of just experiencing the different reasons as to why people play hockey, which I kind of forgot, especially doing it full time. And as a profession, you forget that people just play hockey because they love the sport. They, they're not trying to be you know, a professional at it. They just love playing with their friends and it's something that they look forward to at the end of the day, especially in school. And have there been any particular highlights or, or things that have stood out for you? Because I know that you've taken them on a few trips and things like that, or is it, is, is it one of those days in particular, or is it just you know seeing them, enjoying themselves and having fun? Yeah, I think... Uh, there's been there's been so so many highlights when you say that what first comes to mind is just the relationships i've formed with the children and the children's parents uh, the fact that they the children's parents definitely do trust me and respect the coaching that myself and Tendo Kamuli ha have been doing with the with the children and really um, value what we've what we've been doing with with the children the the first term for us was fantastic, running trips to Epsom College and Wickham School. 
and just seeing the amazement on the kids' faces when we went to Epsom College, like they just had never experienced a school like that before, like with that many grounds, with a swimming pool, with a chapel. Like we went into a chapel and we spent like half an hour just them like looking up into the ceiling. Like um, so, yeah, moments like that, uh, being able to go into the gym at week of school. And we had a, a presentation at the end of first term where we had all the parents, all the children, and we gave them certificates and we, we, we gave out kit to them. And it was just a great moment to kind of summarize what a fantastic term it had been. So, yeah, I think those are a few of the highlights that pop up into mind. And when you when you took them to, to those schools, was it for you almost a sort of showing them that actually, you know, this is this is attainable for them as well because you you went to that primary school and you ended up going to Whitgift. So, you know, is, is it was it you sort of showing them that actually, you know, if they want to, they can achieve these things that they perhaps didn't know even existed? Yeah, 100%. I think as well as that, we wanted to train on an actual hockey astroturf because we've been training on tarmac. So the thought process was, can we get the kids training on astroturf? And definitely, um, yeah, my background is that I got a birthday to go to Wicked School and I had never heard about Wicked School, but one of my friend's mums just brought me there. And ever since I went through the gates, I was like, I need to go to this school. I was just taken back by the peacocks, the, the prefects in gowns and things like that. So I wanted to just for them just to have the same experience and just awareness as I did. Um, so if they are capable, if they do want to go down that path, they are aware that that is possible for them. So, so yeah. I was actually lucky enough to be there with you on the on the trip to Whitgift School. And one thing I noticed was that they are a brilliant bunch of kids. Like they're really funny, really entertaining. Is that something that, that you really enjoy? Actually, is actually just, you know, spending time with a really, a really good bunch of people? Yeah, one hundred percent. I think as as time goes on, like you you definitely develop good relationships with the children, um, having banter. Like, yeah, I, I love it. It just reminds me of how I was like when I was in school. Um, and yeah, like those relationships are definitely a big reason as to why we continue to do it and why it's been such a, a great two terms at Emmanuel. And you talk about how you continue to do it. Obviously, the last few months have been dominated by coronavirus and, and lockdowns and all, all those sorts of things. And we spoke to Ian about, you know, how that's provided him with an opportunity to do some sort of online coaching and virtual sessions. Has that sort of been something that you've then been doing with the with the children to continue on what, what you started? Yeah, from a Hockey in the City perspective, I didn't want to do anything straight away because I realised that there are obviously a lot of challenges that come along with Corona. So I gave it a bit of time and then we started up weekly challenges and I would, we have, we've got a WhatsApp group. We'd communicate on that with all the parents and yeah, to send weekly video challenges and try and incentivize the children to send in videos. Like there's no pressure for them to do so. If they want to do send in videos, they can. And yeah, people have really enjoyed having something to do at home and yeah striving to continue to improve because they're like right at the start of their journey i think it's very crucial that they have hockey content to continue practicing because they haven't played that much so yeah it was to try and continue them improving on their hockey journey as well as giving them something to do at home and do you do you feel like mo most if not all of the kids have been engaged and, and wanting to to do that and get involved and maybe not even send you the videos but just try it at home yeah a lot of them have um like i reckon just over half of our children have done and we've been sending them to spencer links as well so definitely and i've been sending them individual feedback and i've seen improvement throughout the lockdown which which is great like when you see the videos at the start of lockdown and you've seen them like now we're in week eight and i'm like wow like your control is so much you just you just look like a hockey player now as opposed to you know not a hockey player and what what would you like those those children that when when they eventually 
you know, because some of them will be leaving Emmanuel School. What would you what would you like them to to do? Um, would you you know like like to see them in clubs, or would you just want to just see them just continuing to play hockey in any any way they can? I think it's very like you've got to treat almost each child individually based on where they're going to secondary school, their interest in hockey, like their ability. There are definitely, well, we obviously we want everyone to continue playing hockey, but the reality is that they're not all going to. So providing them with the information and the pathways to join a club is something that we have been doing and we will definitely make more of an effort with our year six leavers because our year six is, uh, they're very good. I don't, they're strong. So I want to, you know, help them continue playing hockey and kind of just chat to them on an individual basis. Like, how have you found the first two terms? Do you want to continue playing hockey? Yes. Okay. This is the best club based on where you're going to secondary school. Okay. If you don't want to continue a club, can we provide you with like community sessions uh, put on by hockey in the city? So yeah, it's very much like variable what we want from the kids. And something you else you mentioned earlier as well is the the relationship that you've developed with the parents. Sort of how how have they received the whole process, and sort of what's the the feedback they've given you, and how have they been getting involved as well? <laughs> yeah, we've actually had uh, a couple parents um, do some of the skills with with their children. Um, yeah, the, the parents have been fantastic, uh, writing messages on the group, like showing their appreciation actually getting the children to do the hockey videos because obviously they have to record it so yeah their support has been great and it and it, and it always has been they've accompanied us on on trips to to epsom to whitgift and so yeah something that i really do value and finally obviously this is a very strange time for us and we don't really know what the future holds but where would you like to see hockey in a city go? What what would you like to to do, continue doing with the business? So I think that whatever direction we go in, you know, what is at the heart of hockey in a city is making hockey accessible um, within inner city areas and you know diversifying diversifying the population that that play hockey. So whatever direction we choose to go in, whether that be partnerships with other clubs or running community sessions, at the heart of everything we'll, we do, we'll have, you know, wanting to make hockey more accessible for children, giving that equal opportunity to people from inner city areas to play hockey because, yeah, it's not a sport that's very popular within inner city areas. So, yeah, that is it pretty much. And... As as an as a player as an athlete, something we spoke to Ian about earlier is that you guys sort of realizing that you actually have with your states and everything have the power to to change things. And I've seen and quite a few of the GB athletes have been on boards with with hockey in the city. Is that something you're gonna try and continue doing? Is that as athletes using your your platform to inspire people and to show them that you know hockey is a sport that anyone can do. I definitely will be using my platform to, to do that. I think, you know, there's no, you don't have to do it. Like there's, there's no like responsibility to do that. I don't think like it's just based on how you are as a person and, and what you want to do. Like I feel I have a responsibility because I was very fortunate to go to a week of school, to go to a, Durham University and my frustrations through my experiences of not of seeing a lack of representation from any city areas was such that I felt like I, I I'm not really a talker so I was like I need to do something about it so I will definitely continue to do it um, but that's a very kind of like personal standpoint and personal opinion like I don't force so we've had see Sarah Robinson Hannah Martin Will Cowan, Jack Waller, Brendan Creed come down and help out. And yeah, I don't force any any of them to do it if they want to do it. And they have always expressed 
interest in doing it um then i say look we've got this opportunity are you happy to come down and they've been very supportive of it so yeah i will continue to do it there's no like pressure or responsibility for every anyone to like push hockey as a sport because we all have our own personal backgrounds experiences and you know we're all still doing this professionally so it's just how you want to use your time and finally for you you're still obviously very young right at the start of into your international career but is is full-time coaching something that you you're maybe considering one day in the in the distant future so yeah i can't lie i haven't really thought about that um i enjoy coaching like little sessions here and there like the basics the technique you know taking a team is a whole different story full-time coaching like obviously i coach at evo hockey and doing three days there is enough for me in a, in a week um, so whether i do that doing it full-time is, is a completely different story and i guess something that i'll have to think about as time goes on but for now i really enjoy kind of working with the children i'm working with it's uh because we're not doing so many, we're not doing that many children. It's quite nice to have good and personal relationships with every single one. And yeah, in terms of full-time coaching, I'm not entirely sure right now. That's fair enough. And uh, we look forward to seeing you playing a lot more before then. Uh, thanks for joining us, Reese, And we wish you all the best with Hockey in a City. Make sure you check them out on social media to see all the fantastic work they're doing and get in contact, you know, if you want to, if you want to help out too. Yeah, www.hockeyinnercity.co.uk. Go check out the website at Hockey Inner on Twitter, at Hockey Inner City on Instagram. You've got to plug yourself. You know what I mean? Cool. Sorry, had to get that in. Yeah, exactly what Rich just said. Inside the circle of the podcast, we'll be back in two weeks. And a massive thank you once again to Ian and Reese for joining us. Once again, a huge thank you to Ian and Reese for joining us this week and make sure you check out their websites and social media pages to see how you can get involved. Inside the Circle will return in two weeks and in the meantime, make sure you subscribe on all of your usual podcast providers. Mm-hmm.